Welcome here back live from the Bella Center where it's time for the Monday afternoon tea break. And as you are live with us on Facebook and YouTube, you get the latest and the greatest news because uh, I'm now joined by the first <laughs> official winner of the ESOT Leonardo da Vinci Award. I'll hold it up for you right here. It's Emily Thompson. Emily, congratulations. Thank you very much. If you haven't followed that session online, make sure you join us on esottransplantlive.org where you'll be able to see a rebroadcast of your session where you were, were with five other finalists. Yeah. Very tense because <laughs> when you walked in, you didn't know yet whether you would come out as a winner. No. You all presented your papers, yep. very innovative work, <laughs> and then there was a vote. Yeah. And you came out as a winner. I know. How are you feeling? Surprised and yeah. very, very happy. Um, yeah, I can't really believe it. There's the other, the other contestants. I was sitting there listening to their stuff, thinking, wow, this is great. Um, so yeah, I feel very privileged. Well, let's, let's take our audience a bit into the journey that you have been uh, going through and wha what you've been doing that is apparently so, so incredibly <laughs> innovative that the editors of the leading transportation journals and the audience here thinks it should win. The title of your paper was Reconditioning marginal human kidneys using multi-stem, which is a, a, a trademarked uh, technology cell therapy, delivered during normothermic machine perfusion. Let's unravel that a bit. <laughs> One of the things I heard that the, that the editors picked up on was the fact that you used human kidneys instead of animal models. Yeah, so this this project is quite at the on that translational spectrum. So we were using kidneys that had been turned down for clinical transplantation uh, and putting them on machine perfusion and then delivering a human stem cell product. So it's as close to what we would actually do if this therapy was in the clinic as you can possibly get. So not a mouse model, not cells in vitro, um, which I think probably might have, might have been why there was an interest in it. Yeah, and, and for people who haven't had the chance to Google your background, <laughs> you're still in your PhD phase. Yep. Uh, you've been working on this project for about three years, yep. you just said me. Can you share me the moment which, which sparked the imagination <laughs> of, of setting out on this journey? Um, I think it, normothermic perfusion has been a big, you know, shift in how everybody thinks in transplants. Um, and... Uh, Cell therapy always seemed like an obvious marriage to me with transplantation, but it's difficult to achieve successful cell therapy because when you deliver them in the vein, they'll get stuck in the lungs. So actually getting them to the kidney is difficult. But if you have a kidney on a machine, you can get those cells straight in. And so it was from there that I just pursued it further and further. Um, and, it, it, you know, it seemed to work out quite successfully. Yeah, so basically you say it's an opportunity that arises from this whole new development. And yeah. earlier we had our ESO president talking about the, the, a new phase in yeah. transportation where yeah. the organ is ex vivo and we yeah. can do all these you kind of things. You can do all these exciting things, cell therapies, gene therapies, um, specific drugs that you maybe wouldn't want to give to a patient because they're toxic. Um, it's, it's, so it's really exciting. And can you share a little bit about your research setup? What, what, what did you set out to do? So we would get, kid you get a text message that tells you that the kidneys have been turned down for transplant. You accept the kidneys, they get delivered to the hospital, surgically prepare them, put them on the machines, and I would have both kidneys going simultaneously. One has the stem cells and one's the control. And I think that's one of the reasons this model's been so nice, because you can really tease out the effect of the cells. Um, whereas and that's one of the benefits of doing kidney research. In the liver, you can't have a spare liver from the same donor, so that's how we did it, and we took samples of everything, and then we also did scanning of the kidneys whilst they were perfusing to make sure there wasn't clots in the system, um, and yeah. And just checking, what did you do to, to control kidney? Nothing, or just normal so perfusion? What, or what the cells had been suspended in was just what we gave them, so it's just like a vehicle control. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, now, take us to the results. What did you find? What happened? So th the first objective was just to kind of prove that you could put cells in the circuit because to me, a bolus of 50 million cells could clog up the kidney. So we wanted to make sure that it still peed, there was still blood flow, there wasn't any you know, changes in metabolism. And so we're trying to establish that it's feasible. And then we look to see, okay, it's feasible. What's it doing? Is it changing cytokines? Is it changing biomarkers? And it was. And then it was a, the machine perfusion's great because you can do all these studies, but you can't 
understand what might happen after transplant by the machine. So then we took the samples and then put it back into other models to try and understand what might happen after transplant. Um, and then thirdly, we wanted to know after we put the cells in the kidney, where they were going, what they were kind of sticking to, where they were ending up, were they going to damaged areas. Um, so there was a tracking. And element. how did you research that? So they were labeled with a fluorescent dye before okay. they went in. Um, so you could take sections of the kidney and find the cells. Um, and also we kind of drained the circuit, spun it through a filter and captured out the cells that were circulating in the machine. So exactly. you could kind of understand both compartments. What, was, what yeah. stayed behind? Uh, what's left in the behind kidney and, and what's what circulating. Still circulating. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And um, well, in your title, it specifically mentions the normothermic perfusion. Why was the temperature so important? So one of the other experiments we did was with cold perfused kidneys and put the cells in, but they just wash around, which is what we expected, but we felt we had to show that yeah, as well. Yeah, to um, double check. You need a metabolically active organ so that you can put in metabolically active cells so that they can interact. If you didn't have normothermic perfusion, it would just be a washing round effect. Exactly. And, and to you now, what was one of the most surprising outcomes of your research? What, what was something you didn't, really didn't expect? So I think it was um, when we were scanning the kidneys, because I devised that experiment because I was worried that there might be clots. And so I was trying to prove, hopefully, that it didn't cause any blockages. But what we actually saw was the total opposite, was that the blood flow opened up and you got new blood flow in hypoxic areas of the kidney. Um, which was a great finding for us. And it also helped us kind of understand the mechanisms of how the cells are working. So we think they're going to hypoxic areas, becoming part of the tissue, releasing their secretome, and then they're reconditioning those areas, which is something that's very difficult to do with just a drug-based therapy because it doesn't have that biological ability to get to yeah. where you need and it. And develop in yeah. the place where they yeah. live. Wow, amazing. And, and well, this has been finished. Research done and dusted, award won. The second <laughs> yeah. award already, I understand. Yeah. You also won the award at the British yeah. Society yeah, yeah. of Transplantation. So um, what's next? Where are you taking this? So hopefully, we feel that this is almost there, ready to take to the clinic. There's probably a few more things we need to work out. The dose we used was a dose based on what they use in whole patients, so we did an equivalency. Um, but we probably need to try lower doses, higher doses, and see if we see still the get the same is. effect. Um, but after that, it's because just... Because are there drawbacks? Are there side effects that you... So you want to make sure you yeah, minimize the doses? I think maybe not. The the That product, they always like high doses, and they think that higher doses are more effective. And on the machine, there's no human attached that exactly. you could let the higher doses might cause a problem with. Um, so, but I think it's just, it, it's, that's a requirement of the, of the regulators to, to make sure you've got the correct dose. Yeah. So that would be so that's the next. need to be yeah. figured out. And once yeah. we have that, Potentially clinical clinic. testing. That's, that's my hope, but it's never quite as easy as that. But I, I do think if we can get the funding to take it to a trial, we, we'd start in patients with marginal kidneys, putting them on the machine and seeing if we can get them to a transplantable level and implanting them. Well, very, very exciting work. Now, winning the Eastwood Leonardo da Vinci Award not only comes with eternal bragging rights, I mean, there's <laughs> nobody else who can claim I was the first who won this award. It also comes with a 10,000 euro grant. Very nice. Um, everybody wants to know, how are you going to spend it? <laughs> <laughs> I think the rest of the Newcastle team have also been asking, and we're probably going to go out for quite a nice dinner. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that I can make a dent in that money in one of the bars in Copenhagen. Yes. Um, and yeah, I, I had never thought I'd win the money, so I haven't got any plans for it. Not really. yet, no. And the other obvious reason would be the rest would be in the future research yeah. of your uh, work, maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, well, uh, thank you very much, Emily, and thank you for sharing this story thank with us. Thank you for having me. Um, I think that if you're watching that uh, you could become a transplantation professional, that we hear much more of. You're on your way to become a transplant surgeon, right? That's the plan, yeah. So good luck with that as well. Thank and, you very uh, much. Well, you're starting off on a, on a high.